this week on Cruising New England. A camper, barbecue, kitty rides. This guy really knows how to have fun. I'm Paul Minette, and I want to welcome you to another edition of Cruise in New England. Today, I'm in central Maine to meet up with a friend of mine, Peter Prescott. He's going to show me some rare cars that he added to his collection and a whole lot of fun stuff. All this and more on Cruise in New England. All my life, I've been cruising New England meeting great people, visiting amazing places, and discovering wonderful classic and custom car collections, nostalgic automobilia, and so much more. Come on and join our adventure. I'm Paul Minette. Let's go cruising. This episode of Cruising New England is brought to you by McMokin Chevrolet, where there is always 250 new Corvettes to choose from. National Parts Depot stocks over 135,000 parts for your classic Mustang, Cougar, Camaro and Firebird, Chevelle and GTO, Ford and Chevy truck, Bronco and Thunderbird. With four massive warehouses nationwide and the industry's best in-stock ratio, you'll get the parts you need right now. No waiting on back orders. Nobody beats NPD's quality, speed, and service. For your free catalog, call 888-893-FAST or visit us at mpdlink.com. McMulkin Corvette is the largest new Corvette dealer in the world. That's right, the largest Corvette dealer in the world. Located in Nashua, New Hampshire, McMulkin Corvette ships vehicles nationwide. Experience why thousands of Corvette owners throughout the U.S. have chosen McMulkin. Contact our dedicated Corvette team today and see for yourself how easy it is to drive your all-new C8 Corvette. When you're cruising for a new Corvette, you'll find it at McMulkin.net. Grundy Insurance Pit Stop. First, we'll upgrade your coverage to agreed value so you get 100% of what your car is worth. Standard insurance policies just don't do that. There's never any depreciation and zero deductible. And Grundy's rates are less than half of standard insurance companies. Call us today or visit Grundy.com. Your special moments are something to remember. For weddings, portraits, and special events, contact Sparks Fly Photography. So we're back, and I'm in central Maine via an invitation from one of my good friends, Peter Prescott. How are you doing, Paul? Peter, you call me all excited on the telephone that you had some new stuff that you wanted to show me in your collection. Well, it was old stuff, but it's new to me. <laughs> oh, that's true, that's true. Now, we're going to start off, I guess, with this pretty rare race car. Right. So tell us about it. Okay, this is a 1951 Hudson, and Hudsons were big time in NASCAR in 1950 and 51. And so I decided that when I found the body was pretty well beat up, I decided to build one. And uh, so this is the result. Okay, so what did you do with it? Tell us tell us about it. Oh, we started from scratch and built it up, and we wanted to make it like the real ones were. And really, what the only thing they did is they took the cars and then put a roll bar in the cars and usually put a screen over the headlights, which this has, so the rocks wouldn't break it, and then went racing, so. Let's talk about the motor. That's the most, one of the most important things with this vehicle. Tell us about what's under the hood. Okay, the motor we changed. Um, the motor is a Hemi, set 1976 Hemi, a uh, dual four barrel. What about the paint scheme on this? Why did you go with this? Oh, because this, most of the Hudsons, all of them had fabulous Hudson on the hood and a lot of more white, so we went with white. So, Peter, you told me you had something very special under the trunk lid there that you wanted to show me. Yes, I do. I want to show you this. This is pretty special. That's almost all of the drivers and crew chiefs that were racing in 1998. 
How did you ever accumulate them, and, and, and how did you get them to come over and sign the car? Well, it's amazing. We took it to the track and got in the pits with this car and thought we were going to have a time, and once it got started, they were lined up to sign it. So they told us that day we were more popular than the drivers. So. So, Peter, I know what we're going to see next. A very rare 1934 DeSoto. When you told me about the new list of cars you got to add to your collection, I was very excited about this 1934 DeSoto. Yes, this is an airflow. Not very many people know about them. They didn't make very many. They were made 34 to 37 um, in a pretty neat car. They were special steel, special frames, and their design is really way back then for the flow of the air to be more efficient um, and to top it off in 1934 to prove that they had made a rugged car they pushed one off a 110 foot cliff and then drove it away my god that's unbelievable i'd like to have a video of that <laughs> now you know what, what makes this car very exciting is that waterfall girl yes and waterfall in the original ones they made very few waterfalls and then they changed it so this is original waterfall room. It's beautiful. That really makes the car. And those skirts on the back. That's. I mean, you, you got to look at those. Well, Chrysler did a lot of things. This guy's got a lot of gadgets. It's got um, freewheeling lever. It's it's really got some options to it. What do you have under the hood? Uh, just a st standard six-cylinder flathead engine. So, but that this car compared to the Fords, this car will cruise at 75. Beautiful, beautiful. What about the interior? Anything special about the interior? Well, yes, it's all uh, uh, framed. It has a chrome frame, uh, which I really like around around the seats, you know? And uh, so it's it's a pretty amazing thing. Well, it's a beautiful car, but I know we got a lot to look at, so let's get going. All right. It's not too often you get to see a 23 window Volkswagen bus. I've always wanted a, a bus. And I always wanted 23 windows, so when I found this one, I got it. And uh, pretty amazing vehicle, and I'm pretty happy because it's a 59, and they started in 57, so I would have rather had the 57, but 59 does the trick, I guess. So it's a 23 window Volkswagen. We got to talk about the windows. So tell us about the the front windows to begin with. Okay, well, the front windows roll out, which I like, and uh, uh, of course the 23 windows is the back corners. Uh, windows make it 23 from 21 and of course I collect convertibles and this is a convertible now how rare is that yeah there was a lot less but that was an option you could get so and it takes up pretty good because it's air con it's manual air conditioning I mean, with the windows, right? Yeah. Those front no, no. windows. No, no, no. There's a vent in the front. Okay. okay. That takes the air in, and inside you can direct where you want the air to go. Hey, works for me. The motor in this is in the back. There's a special key that you have to have to open it, and the horsepower is 44. When you bought it, was it like this, or did you restore it? No, I, this one we haven't touched. Much easier to do it that way, isn't it? Sure, it's much less money, too. All right, let's talk about the interior, because that has a lot to do with this. This, this uh, I mean, you can take a whole family, definitely a family, yes. aunts and uncles and cousins in this. That's what I always wanted, one and just pile in nine people and go for a ride. Peter, you got a lot more cars to show me, but what is this bag of charcoal for? Well, that's a surprise. I'm going to show you Mr. Kingsford's car that um, Henry Ford built for him. A lot more of Cruising New England when we come back. McMulkin Corvette is the largest new Corvette dealer in the world. That's right, the largest Corvette dealer in the world. Located in Nashua, New Hampshire, McMulkin Corvette ships vehicles nationwide. Experience why thousands of Corvette owners throughout the U.S. have chosen McMulkin. Contact our dedicated Corvette team today and see for yourself how easy it is to drive your all-new C8 Corvette. When you're cruising for a new Corvette, you'll find it at McMulkin.net. Do you have a child with food allergies? Does your school need help managing food allergies? I'm Gina Manette Lee, a nationally recognized food allergy author, educator, and consultant. I provide a common sense, fact-based approach to managing food allergies at home and at school. For more information, visit foodallergyconsulting.com. Who knew a 
insuring all of my cars could be such a nightmare. Between my family SUV, the car I take to work every day, my dream cars. Oh, I've got too many insurance policies. A Grundy MVP policy is a special product for anyone who's car crazy. Ensure any vehicle you own with the same consistent coverage for all of them at their agreed value on one policy. Hi, I'm Jim Grundy, Fiat Grundy MVP. Call us today or visit us at Grundy.com. National Parts Depot stocks over 135,000 parts for your classic Mustang, Cougar, Camaro and Firebird, Chevelle and GTO, Ford and Chevy truck, Bronco and Thunderbird. With four massive warehouses nationwide and the industry's best in-stock ratio, you'll get the parts you need right now. No waiting on back orders. Nobody beats NPD's quality, speed, and service. For your free catalog, call 888-893-FAST or visit us at mpdlink.com. So we're back, and I'm with my good friend Peter Prescott. And before we went on break, you told me that this bag of charcoal had something to do with one of the cars in your collection. That's exactly correct. Um, this it, it has to do with a 1942 Mercury. And uh, what happened is that uh, Ford charcoal um, was Ford was selling charcoal, and and when Mr. Kingsford, which is Kingsford charcoal, married into the Ford family. Henry changed the name of the charcoal company from Ford Charcoal, which you can see here, from Ford Charcoal to um, Kingsford Charcoal. Now, I understand that Henry Ford made his dealers sell charcoal at the dealerships. Is that true? That's exactly right, plus the grills. You had to sell if you were a Ford dealer. You had to sell the charcoal plus the grills. What an entrepreneur. I guess he had other stuff, too, that they had to sell, even tomato sauce, right? Yes, tomato, juice. tomato juice. Yeah. Is it true that the Kingsford briquettes were made out of Ford wood? Well, it's true that the charcoal briquettes are made out of leftover wood, yes. So is this actually the car that Kingsford owned? It most certainly is. It's the car that Henry built for him in 1942. Well, I want to have a look at it. All right. So tell us a little bit about the vehicle itself. Okay, this is a 1942 Mercury Woody wagon, which is very rare in its own. And this is the only one they made in 42 that's bird's eye maple. So you, you have a one-of-a-kind vehicle here. This thing here is, is so rare that it's, it's, it's priceless. That's exactly right. So why did Henry Ford make a Mercury for his son-in-law? Because the Mercury's are more luxurious. I mean, I've seen a lot of Woody's, but this wood looks really special. It is special. It's bird's eye maple, which was usually Ford did four or five a year. And this year, they only did one because the wall broke out. Let's talk about the interior now. Is it an all-stock interior? Oh, no. This car is totally the way Henry built it at the factory. Now, this really is a family vehicle. Oh, yes. So, Peter, what are we going to see next? Well, I got a couple more Woodies to show you. And I'm dying to see them. All right, let's go. So next you want to show me a 1946 Woody Wagon. Yes, that's exactly right. And um, I got this because it fits into the collection. I've been collecting Woody Wagons, and this came available, so I got it. So tell me what's special about it. Oh, nothing other than it's a 1946 a Woody Wagon, and it's in really good shape. And, and uh, I've got a collection starting in 1935 of wagons, so I picked it up. and. So, Peter, you got one more special Woody you want to show me here today. Yeah, and it's a real special one. Well, let's go see it. All right. So this is the last of the Woodies that you want to show me here today. Yes. This, what makes this so special? This is a Mom and Harrington uh, four-wheel drive, which when the factory, a uh, Ford factory built the wagons, they were shipped to Mom and Harrington. And Mom and Harrington took them all back, all, bodies all off them, and converted them to four-wheel drive. And it absolutely is unbelievable, but it doubled the price. So whatever the price of the car was for the conversion was double. Wow. So they didn't make very many of them. They claim that they uh, and did a 46, a 47, and a 48 Mercury. And uh, so it's got the wood like a normal wagon. It's um, got a flathead motor in it. It's it, Now the transmission is totally different. Transmission and rear end are different because it's four-wheel drive. You know, Peter, this looks like a beach buggy that I could put some surfboards on. Yeah, more like a tundra buggy, huh? <laughs> All right, I guess you got some other vehicles you want to show me. Yes, I do. 
So you call that a tundra wagon. What do you call these? <laughs> these are power wagons, and they really got a lot of power. We kid with everybody that you could hit your chain on them and pull this building around the block. <laughs> I believe it. These come from the factory with 584 fronts and rears, so they're really powerful. Well, let's talk about the, the 67 first. All right, 67 is really the last year of this power wagon. These power wagons didn't change for over 20 years, but they're really heavy duty. The tires, the springs, the, the motor, the transmission, they're all heavy duty. It doesn't look like there's too much difference between the two. Uh, really, the only difference is that they made the motor a little bit longer, and so if you really look, you can see a little dis uh, difference in the hood. I'm not positive, but I think it's around three inches. Now you have three of them now in your collection? Yes. Is that it now, or are you still looking for a couple more? No, I've got enough of those. Okay, you're done with that part of the collection. When we come back, we're gonna see a lot more of Peter's collection right here on Cruising New England. <laughs> John Smoltz welcoming you back to the City Center Convenience Mart. Well, John, the stage is set for the final transaction. That's right, Joe. Heather's moment has arrived, and you just hope all that training pays off. Heather lays down her purchase, but Randy rings it up as slowly as he can. He is a wily veteran. It gives Heather's eyes the chance to wander. Uh-oh. Yep, she's looking at the cigarettes. There's nothing good back there. Quit now, and in five years, your odds of getting certain cancers drop 50%. Meanwhile, Randy's stone-faced. He's giving nothing away. He just stands there, wetting his cashier's finger on that sponge. Heather toes the rubber. Here we go. Heather's arm is in motion. But instead of pointing at the back wall, she just grabs the gum off the counter. That's a slick move. Heather, back, back, back. She is out of there. Even Randy tips his cap to Heather. Stand up to cancer and rally wants you to reduce your risk for cancer. Go to takeahealthystand.org. So now we're back. I'm in Central Maine with my good buddy Peter Prescott, National Cash Register Vehicle. You got to tell me about this one. Yeah, National Cash Register had Ford make... Um, some cars for them to go, the salesmen to travel, to sell and repair cash registers. Ford Motor Company made the cars and sent them to a um, dealer called l &B, and they cut a door in the back. And on the weekends, he could take the signs out of the window, the floor up, put a back seat in, and have take his family. So it's quite a, it's quite a conversion. So what we have here is a 1935. That's exactly right. It's a 35 Ford. Is it all stock back, uh, an all stock vehicle that you, you would have seen back yes. then? Peter, actually, this looks to me like a show car rather than a work vehicle or family vehicle. Yeah, well, it really is a, a show car now. And they claim there's a couple of these around. This is a 1935. So, Peter, the special feature on this thing is, is the trunk. Let me show you. They cut this door in the back. So, and you'll see this special bumper they put so that you could get up close to it um, to lift the cash register in and out. The, the cash register on the right, there's, there's something special about that. Yes, they made those for samples, and they made 8,000 of them and sold every single one of them. There are no guts in that register, um, but it's a pretty good-looking sample. Huh? It sure is. It had me fooled, that's for sure. So where to next, Peter? Right here. Okay. Peter, tell me what you got here. I got, uh, this is a 1932 Ford sedan delivery. Tell me what's special about yeah, it. I, I think it's very special. It was a regular car, had a door put in it, had the windows blocked off in the back, and this was used as a sales vehicle. It's got a wood floor in the back, and uh, the salesman drove around and had models, and I'll show you if you'd like to see. I would like to see it, let's go look. So, I guess it was used for delivering fertilizer, huh? Yeah, Ford fertilizer. So Ford was even in the fertilizer business, eh? Yeah, it sure were. I mean, Ford got in almost every business there was. He hated to have to buy something, so he tried to do everything himself. So, Peter, we're going to look at a celebrity-owned vehicle up next? Yes, you are. All right, let's go. Now we're going to look at a 1937 Lincoln limo. But what makes it special? 
Well, word has it that it was owned by the Rockefellers, built for the Rockefellers, and went to the Philippines and spent its life in the Philippines. It was the only one that K Company, this, got a, this is what they call a K-body limo. It's a V-12 K-body, and they claim it's the only one they built in yellow. So let's talk about the interior. Well, the interior is all back to the way it was built. This one thing I really liked about this car is it's got all of the things that were in the car. The radio system, it's got a two-way radio system. It's got a chauffeur lock, so the chauffeur can't get in the rear. The Rockefeller family signifies money and luxury, and this car certainly has it all. It sure does. Now, I know next up is something very, very unusual in your collection, and it's not a car or a motorcycle. Yeah, but it might be the most fun. Well, let's go have a look at it. All right. I've been doing this for a long time, but I've never seen anything like this. A 1940 Bombardier. Yeah. What do you have this in the collection for? Oh, it's just, it's great. It's a hell of a conversation piece, right? And uh, it is all 1940 Ford, and it's called a B7 because it's a seven pasture. And this was for over 20 years. This particular one was in Canada, Quebec. Back then, they did not plow the roads, so you either had to have a horse and carriage or one of these track machines, and they used them as taxis. So where you live up here in the state of Maine, uh, this might come in handy sometime. Oh, absolutely. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. I think you are too. Can I come along with you? Yeah, you sure you, can. You gonna bring the hot dogs? Yeah, bring some dimes. Okay. Hey folks, when we come back, we're gonna have a look at some nifty supercharged vehicles and a whole lot more right here on Cruising New England. McMulkin Corvette is the largest new Corvette dealer in the world. That's right, the largest Corvette dealer in the world. Located in Nashua, New Hampshire, McMulkin Corvette ships vehicles nationwide. Experience why thousands of Corvette owners throughout the U.S. have chosen McMulkin. Contact our dedicated Corvette team today and see for yourself how easy it is to drive your all-new C8 Corvette. When you're cruising for a new Corvette, you'll find it at McMulkin.net. Insurance, 100% agreed value, zero deductible, and no depreciation. Bye! Hi, I'm Sam Grundy. Call us today or visit us at Grundy.com. Check out Cruise in New England Productions' website. You'll see updated information about our fun car show series, including the Magical Mystery Cruise, the Circle of Champions, the Super Wheel Showdown, and the Spooktacular Cruise and Classic. Cruise in New England magazine goes online, features stories, best bet car shows, cruise nights, and a whole lot more. Come cruise with us. And if you want more information about sponsorships, advertising, or personal appearances by Paul Manette, email us at cruisenewengland at AOL.com. Cash for Gold, the place to sell your unwanted gold and diamonds. Where you sell your jewelry is as important as where you buy it. We at Cash for Gold are diamond and gold specialists. We will buy all size diamonds, gold chains, rings, bracelets, silver coins, and even broken jewelry. Often we pay two to three times higher than pawn shop prices. We also pay up to 90% of the daily price of both diamonds and gold. We are the original, authentic, family-run Cash for Gold and have been for more than 28 years. Visit us at 527 South Broadway, Route 28 in Salem, New So we're back. I'm in Central Maine with my friend Peter Prescott, and Peter's going to show me three 57 supercharged vehicles from factory. That's exactly right. This was a big year for Ford. This 1957 supercharged Fords were, were uh, among the most, the fastest cars that were available to the public. We have the Thunderbird. Uh, they made a total amount of less than 300 supercharged cars and 285 or 280 with Thunderbirds. What we have next is a four-door uh, Fairlane 500. They only made one of these. Um, we kid about it being an old man's car, and it's the only one Ford ever built supercharged. And finally, the third one, is a 57 retractable hardtop. This car is probably my favorite because this is not only a retractable, but it's standard in overdrive, 
uh, with the supercharge. A hard top convertible really fits in with your collection. It sure does. That's probably why I got it. <laughs> so if we were to line these three vehicles up at the Prescott Speedway, which one would win? The Fairlane 500. Very good. You know, Peter, these supercharged cars were awesome, but now you got some fun vehicles you want to show yeah, me. Yeah, let's go this way. Peter, what can be more fun than a pair of Cushmans? I don't know, but these are great ones. This is the delivery car to take people home when they're having the car repaired or pick them up. And notice uh, OSHA wouldn't like it, no seat belts, whatever. And that is a truckster that happened to be Allegheny Airlines in the old days that when the plane got out on the runway and somebody had forgot a suitcase, they would send it out on that, put it on the plane and go. So it'd be a lot of so fun. So let's talk about this one. This is a 1947. Yeah. All right, now, did you find it the way it is? Oh, no, I had it done. And it's supposed to have, and I'm not an expert on Cushman, but this is supposed to have every accessory they made. See, that's really something, the Blue Goose. Now, over here, this was used actually at airports. That's exactly right. Because it was very fast and easy to get the stuff out to the planes that needed and go. You know what I want to have a look at right now? I got to see that one of a kind pedal car. There's only one in the world. We got to look at it. All right. Uh, That's fine. You know, Peter, Cushman's are a lot of fun, but pedal cars are the most fun for me. And you got a pretty rare pedal car here. Tell me about this in my audience. Well, it isn't really a pedal car, but what it is, is an offshoot of what is called an Irish Mailer, which were made with a really a flat board with the wheels and then you pump, you pull it and pump. Now let's see, now pedal car now, you get inside of it, there's two pedals there, you pedal this, you pump back and yeah, forth. Yeah, that's exactly right. like this and it goes forward. That's exactly right. Very nice. Cushman's are fun, this canoe is awesome, but I want to see them kitty rides. Let's go. All right, let's go. You know, you told me you had some fun stuff, but it doesn't get any more fun than these things we're going to look exactly at. exactly right. Uh, let's look at this first. Yeah, I had a fella build that, and it's kind of funny. The only body he could find was a 58 convertible, and I don't have a 58, so now i got to buy a car to go along with that. Yeah. That's a very expensive proposition. Yeah. i got a funny feeling that's going to end up costing you a lot less what you're going to have to buy. That's exactly right. Okay, so next up over here, you got these three horses there. Awesome, awesome horses. And and I think you did a tribute to the Kentucky Derby with these, haven't That's you? That's exactly right. Never seen three horses, so I bought that and we rebuilt it and it's... You know, I've seen carousels that have the four rides. I've never seen one that has three horses. No, I had neither. Do you want to see it work? Of course I want to see it work. Let's go. I didn't bring any dimes, though. You didn't? No. You got a dime? Oh, you don't need a dime. All right. The kind of rides I like. So who's you got a tribute here to Seattle Slough, Sea Biscuit, and Secretariat? Could you ask for three better horses? Hey, who else can say they've ridden a horse that was in the Kentucky Derby? That's exactly huh? right. So you got one more horse you want to show me? Yeah. This is an adult racing horse, and in the 1920s, uh, when you went to the beach or on the pier. Uh, one of the places you could rent one of these and go out riding, like renting a bicycle. And if there were more people there that had them, they raced them. This is capable of doing 38 to 40 miles an hour, and it isn't pumped like a bike. It's, it's, it's set up to really pick up some speed with the mechanism that it has. Peter, I want to thank you for a great day. You weren't lying when you told me you had some beautiful rear automobiles to show me. And some of those fun toys you showed me were awesome. I'm Paul Medette. Until next time, I'll be cruising New England. <laughs>